I'm here in Tokyo with Matt, a Tesla Model Y owner. Where are we now, Matt? Uh, we are at a parking area called Tatsumi First Parking Area. Uh, and usually we're here on Saturday. And on the weekends, it kind of serves as a uh, gathering spot for people who have like really nice cars or performance cars, supercars like JDM, uh, what's called modified cars and stuff like that. So as you can see, there's a lot of cars here today um, and a lot of them are a lot of Ferraris and like really nice cars. So yeah, I come here sometimes uh, once in a while. Like I almost never see a Tesla here, uh, never any Teslas. I actually know I saw one once, but it's mostly a lot of like, you know, supercars and that kind of thing. Um, so a lot of people just gather here for that kind of stuff. <laughs> Let's take a walk down together, check out all the supercars as we head to Matt's Model Y. And look at that old school car. Wow. Got a Harley Davidson as well, a chopper. You can see some very fancy Porsches and Ferraris behind us. And here we are in Matt's Model Y. We'll see you inside. That was impressive. <laughs> Model Y performance. It launches from 0 to 100 kilometers per hour in 3.7 seconds. We're now driving down the freeway towards Toyomi Wharf. Today I'm here with Matt a Tesla Model Y owner. This is a 2022 performance version to hear his experience owning a Tesla in Tokyo, the pros and cons of using an EV here, and to hear what perceptions of EVs are in Japan. Click subscribe to stay updated to more videos on Tesla. Matt, tell us about yourself. Okay, yeah, uh, I'm Matt. Yeah, I've lived in Tokyo for about 13 years, almost 14 years now. Um, so I've been here for quite a long time. Uh, yeah, I, this is the first car I've ever owned um, in, in Japan, like, I, at least in Japan, sorry. I owned cars in the U.S. a long time ago, but this is the first one I ever owned here. I came to Japan in, like, 2009. Well, actually, I originally came here in 2008 to study abroad as a university student, um, and I really kind of fell in love with the country at that time. It was a very short study abroad. It was only about four months. Um, but I decided to come back. I wanted to move here because I liked it so much. I wanted to try living here. Um, and that was right after, so that was right when I graduated college, uh, is right when I came to Japan to live. So that was in 2009 and I've been here ever since. Um, you know, I started off as a, like an English teacher way back in the day, um, cause my Japanese level wasn't all that great. Uh, but it's not something I wanted to do for my full-time career here. Um, so I improved my Japanese over a few years and then I ended up moving into like the gaming industry. I worked in the gaming industry for a while, actually quite a long time, about 10 years wow. at a couple of different companies I worked in the gaming industry. Um, and then more recently I moved into uh, a creative agency that does work for, uh, digital projects like website building and things like that. Um, so it's been quite a ride in Japan. Uh, I've done a lot of different things and I've really enjoyed my time here. Uh, and I've, you know, it's basically at home to me now at this point. I probably will be here probably for the rest of my life, but it's hard to know for sure, obviously. Uh, but I do love it a lot here and I, I you know, that's why I bought a car. <laughs> this is a beautiful country to be in. There's no perfect country, but there's so much to love. Recently, PewDiePie also moved here That's to Japan right, yeah. with his wife. And PewDiePie is driving a Tesla as well. Oh, is he? He is. I didn't know that. Yeah. That's funny. I tried reaching out. So, Felix, if you're watching this, I would love to hear your experience owning a Tesla Please, in Japan. Yeah. <laughs> Congratulations as well on your new member of your family. <laughs> Matt, what made you get a Tesla and specifically a Model Y? Yeah, it's kind of... A simple story. Um, I was in back at home. I'm from California. Uh, I was back in California last year. Uh, it, it had been my first. It was my first time back in about four years uh, because of the pandemic. Uh, so 
what I was shocked by though when I was back there was just how many Teslas there are everywhere. So many. Yeah, shockingly so, like just absolutely incredible. Um, and so I was like, oh, you know what? Maybe I'll try one. Maybe I'll rent one for a day. They're not that expensive to rent. Um, and I never tried driven one. I'd never even been inside of one. Oh no, sorry, I take that back. My friend had one there and I had ridden that a long time ago, years and years before that, um, before they became a really big thing. Um, so anyway, I wanted to try it out. I thought it'd be a lot of fun. So rented one for a day. And it, I actually rented a, I reserved a Model 3. Um, I didn't know anything about what the different types of Teslas then. I didn't know what the models were. It just seemed like the standard sedan. So I was like, okay, three. But when I got there, they were actually out of the three and they only had a, a Y, uh, which is also in black. I think it might've been a performance, although I'm really not, I don't really remember. Um, but I just rented it for the day. And as soon as I started driving it around, I like fell in love with it, like instantly. I don't know, I really, really enjoyed it. It was unlike any other car. I'd ever driven before and it was really fun, um, obviously really fast, uh, but just, you know, the technological part of it as well was really, really impressive and just enjoyed it so much that um, after coming back to Japan, I thought, you know, I really want to get one here. I thought it'd be, I thought it'd be really nice to have one here, um, especially since I plan on staying and I always wanted to have a car here, even though I don't technically like need one for my everyday life. Uh, but that's basically what led me to, to purchasing it. So I ended up getting the Model Y Performance. Um, I actually re originally wanted to get the long range, yeah. but I didn't realize this at the time, but they don't have those here. Um, they only have the uh, rear wheel drive one and the Performance. And I didn't want a rear wheel drive car. I wanted all wheel drive because I was going to go up to the snow sometimes because I guess I like to snowboard a lot. Um, and I wanted to take, be able to take my car and take my snowboard and friends up to the snow. Um, so I needed like an all wheel drive car essentially to, to be safe. Um, so I had to go for the performance basically, uh, which was a surprise to me, but you know, I really like it. I'm really happy with it. <laughs> <laughs> There's no going back. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely not. This is a beautiful car. How much does a Tesla cost in Japan? We know US prices, Japan prices. There's this perception that EVs cost more outside. Yeah. So they, I, I mean, it depends on the exchange rate, but, um, in, in yen, I think the why performance right now costs like 7.5 million yen. It was at 8.5 million yen for a while. Um, and then it dropped, the price dropped uh, earlier this year. And I think it's the same for a lot of the other cars. I don't really, re I think the uh, the performance, or sorry, the rear wheel drive one is closer to 6.5. Okay. So it might be even, it's probably less now with the, with the price drop. So, but it's about maybe 2 million yen difference okay. between the two, something like that. Um, which I guess you can equate to, to make it easy, you could say it's $20,000 difference. It's a lot. Uh, yeah, it's pretty significant. Um, but, and of course, you know, I don't, I don't really remember the prices of the other ones, but I do know this one I think is about 7.5 million right now. That's roughly about 68, 70,000 US yes. dollars? Yeah, something yeah. like that, yeah. It's a great looking car. Matt, can you give us a short tour of this car? Of course, I would be happy to. I'll be behind the camera as Matt walks us through this place. <laughs> okay. So yeah, just to show you around a little bit, um, it's just standard uh, model 2022 Model Y. I got it in all black. Um, I really, really wanted all black. Basically, every Tesla's here, almost all Teslas here are white. Um, I don't know if you've noticed this, but if you see Teslas on the road, they're almost always white. And actually you very rarely see black ones, which is, I'm not sure why. I know they cost a little bit more for the black paint, but you see red ones and blue ones. I think more than you see the black ones, which is surprising to me because I think, I, I understand that people are very conscious about dirt uh, and like dirt shows a bit worse on black cars. It stands out a bit more, so that might be a big reason. But for me, the, the, the look of the all black uh, uh, Tesla Model Y is just amazing. Like it's incredible. I just think it's absolutely gorgeous. Um, and luckily I washed it today to make sure that it's clean for this video. Uh, so yeah, I have it. I don't have any paint protection film. I've never got it unwrapped or anything like that. And I don't plan to because it's very, very expensive. Um, but I do have glass coating on it. Uh, so that was one of the few modifications I have made to it uh, just to pretend to pay, protect the paint a bit and hopefully make it last a little bit longer. Um, but yeah, coming around, I really love the wheels. Like the, I keep on the Uber Turtoin wheels. Uh, with the red calipers. It's one of, I think it's, they're, they're really beautiful. I know a lot of people like to change their uh, their wheels, but I'm not a big fan. I actually like them just as they are. My only complaint is the fact that it's really easy to get curb rash, which is basically something that everyone says because they're not flush with the tire, um, they stick out. So I have gotten curb rash plenty of times, but I, 
I have a kit to let you like fix it yourself. Uh, shout out to Zinc Wheels. <laughs> By the way, this is basically like the initiation for Tesla owner. So <laughs> welcome to the Tesla oh, club. Oh, thank you. Yeah, curb rashes the way. Yeah, yeah. No shame. <laughs> Second day of owning the car. Second day, I got a, I got a curb rash. It was the worst feeling in the world. Um, but yeah, the rest is, you know, standard. It's got the carbon fire, fiber like lip on the back. Um, this is exclusive for performance cars. So you saw the red calipers earlier, the carbon fiber spoilers and the dual models. So the red line is Tesla's performance indicator. Yep, that's exactly right. So I love that. I love having all of that stuff on it. Uh, Matt, could, you, could you show us the charge port and tell us more? Because Absolutely. your charge port is not standard for most of Asia and Europe. Yeah, sure, I'd be happy to. Um, it has this, I guess, I didn't realize that it was not standard in, in other places. Um, but here, let me just open it up really quick. Okay. Just gonna take a second. Yeah, so here is the standard uh, Tesla port. I mean, I have a few charger adapters, which I could also show you if you want to see them. Uh, but yeah, you know, it's the standard one. I didn't realize it was different than elsewhere, to be honest. Like, look at this. It's, it's so small. Those of you who are used to CCS charging, you wonder how could a port this small actually do like 250 kilowatt fast charging? But that's the crazy thing about Teslas. This was actually invented in the US. Back then for Teslas, they didn't have like a DC standard. So Tesla built their own and it's really elegant. To me, this is like the USB-C of charge ports. Or well, some may say, no, this is more like lightning. <laughs> <laughs> I think those are both pretty apt comparisons, definitely. But yeah, I mean, it's fine. This is the standard here. It's, I actually didn't even realize it was different elsewhere. Um, yeah, trunk. Uh, oh yeah, I've, I've tinted the windows uh, just on the back. I mentioned, yeah, you can't actually, you're not allowed to tint the front windows essentially here. Uh, so, I, But I, you can tint as much as you want in the back. Um, so I think these are like 85% tint, something like that. Uh, that's basically the only other mod, real mod that I've made to it. And we have the back. Um, not much here, I have cleaning supplies. I like. I really like to keep the car clean just because it looks so nice when it's clean. And emergency supplies, I keep all my charging stuff back here. Um, so this is the massive Cha Demo, uh, the Cha Demo adapter, uh, which retails at like 80,000 yen. I got it used though for like half that, but like 80,000 years, I guess you could say $800, $700. Um, so it's really expensive, but I got it for about half that price. This thing is gigantic. Yeah. I don't know, it's like it's a Nerf gun or something gigantic, <laughs> it's huge. It's huge and it's heavy, uh, but obviously this goes in the Tesla and then Cha Demo is like, you know, a standard here. Um, and there's a lot of charging places that use Cha Demo. So you just plug it in there and it works, but it's a big pain, it's really heavy. Uh, and then I just have the standard like um, mobile connector, which does not come with the car. I had to buy this separately, but yeah, so the 200 volt and the regular uh, mobile connector, just so I can make sure I can use it anywhere I go. And then this adapter, which is, what is it called? J724, I forget the exact term, but I think this is also standard in the US, um, used quite a lot. So I have this. So I just have all these to make sure that I will never be uh, too far from a working charger. <laughs> Indiana Jones. Just on time. You brought us to a beautiful part of town. Can you tell the audience a little bit more about where we are? Oh yeah, absolutely. So we're in, uh, well, this this specific spot that we're in is called Toyomi Wharf, which isn't particularly like famous, but this whole area is like Koto City. Uh, and we're basically uh, in close to Odaiba, uh, which is where, you know, it's kind of a famous island, man-made island. Um, in the background there is uh, Rainbow Bridge, which it's not lit up right now because it's still too early, but at night it lights up, which is why they call it Rainbow, Rainbow Bridge. Just, and this is one of my favorite spots to bring people just because it's right on the right on the water. Um, and like I mentioned, it's not really famous, so there's usually not that many people here, which is really nice, which is very rare for Tokyo. Uh, so it's, it's, I always like to bring up people out here, yeah. And yeah, that's Odaiba over there. That building with the round ball on it, that's Fuji Television. Uh, studios like the Fuji Television uh, building. It's really famous. This has been a great iconic look. <laughs> Let's head inside as Matt gives us a tour of the interior of his Model Y and we'll talk about what he likes and does not about this car. See you inside. Matt, can you give us an interior tour of your Model Y? Uh, sure. I mean, it's pretty standard. I haven't done many modifications, um, but yeah, you know, 
everything is essentially the normal. The only thing that there's only a couple of differences. Um, and here I put a, uh, one of these cause it only comes, it doesn't come with, I guess it used to come with these, but they don't anymore. So I bought one of these to put in here. Um, and I also have what's called an ETC reader, which is up here. Uh, that's for Japan and it connects all the way down to this card reader down in here. Um, and what ETC is, it's called uh, electronic toll collection. Um, so what it does is when you go onto the freeway, there's always there's always costs like freeway. They're not freeways, they're um, highways here. And they cost a lot of pretty good amount of money depending on how far you're going. Um, but this allows you to connect your credit card essentially with uh, that system and you don't have to stop and pay with cash and you actually get a discount. Um, it costs a little bit less uh, to do that. So that was actually an option that came with buying the car. I didn't have to do that separately on my own. The Tesla dealership does that if you ask for it. Um, but that's about, I think just to get that mod is, if you can call it a mod, um, it's like 30,000 yen. So maybe $20, $250, something like that. So it's a little bit expensive, but it's completely worth it because it's just so much easier to get onto the, the highway with it. It's a system that essentially everyone uses. But other than that, um, yeah, no other interior mods. Uh, the back windows are all tinted um, pretty heavily. Uh, not the front though. We were just talking about this, but you can't actually, you're not allowed to, I wouldn't say you're not allowed to, but uh, most mod places will not, just they will refuse to tint your front windows and it's all front, so it's all front, all three. Um, and the reason is that there's a very strict law uh, that you have to have at least 70% light coming through. And if you put any sort of tent, it just basically puts that at risk. Um, and so, and if you get in trouble with the law for it, the store that did it can also get in trouble, uh, get in trouble, uh, for doing it for you. Um, so I think there are people who will do it, but they do it themselves. Um, but I'm not, I'm not really confident in my abilities to apply it. And I would like to, if I could, but um, yeah, it's just basically difficult. There is one other option that I've looked into. It's called Aurora. Um, and essentially it, it's like a tint, but not uh, black. It's like blue or orange kind of like colored sunglasses and you can do that. Uh, and apparently there's shops that will do it for you and they will actually give you a certificate showing that you have like at least 70% light coming through. So you're able to pass the, uh, inspection. So every few, there's this thing called Shaken, uh, in Japan where you have to get your car inspected. Um, it's sort of like a smog check in the US, um, but they do it a lot more than just the smog and how your car runs. They actually check if you have mods and like tinted and tinting and stuff like this. And they expect they have a device that in, like shows how much light is coming through on the front three windows and they check all of them. Um, and if you get rejected, you have to get it fixed within 30 days or you're basically you're not allowed to drive the car anymore. Um, so you have to make sure that when you, at least when you bring your car in for your shotgun inspection, uh, that it, you have to make sure it, it, it protects all those standards that they have, like the tinting thing. Usually when I show people around, um, the people, the thing that they like the most is like the sound system, uh, because it's a very powerful sound system, uh, which I also really enjoy, um, showing them like all the cameras and how you can see all the cameras on the on the uh, screen here. And of course, you know, driving around, being able to see the, the uh, map in such a, like kind of a Google Maps, the Google Maps map. And you know, when you're driving around, seeing the cars on it, things like that, which is usually what impresses most people the most. Um, of course, the most fun part is always the acceleration. You've had this car for four months now since December, 2022. That's right. A lot of things to like, but what really stands out? What makes you go, wow? Wow, that's that's an interesting question. I think for me, the the overall experience, it's kind of hard to, to, to focus it down to one thing. I think the Tesla is such a unique car in almost every aspect, um, just like the look of it on the outside, as well as the look of it on the inside. It's insanely minimal. Um, that's one of the th first things that people always say when they get in the Tesla is like, where like, where is everything? Like, why is this? Why is there nothing here? Um, but they also really like it. They say, this is really cool. Like everything is done on the screen. I think there are some people who probably don't like it so much. They like to have the physical buttons, um, that they can interact with, which I totally understand. Um, but I'd say that's the, the biggest thing. And just the fact that it's so technologically advanced, 
um, you know, I, I like to call it a, a big smartphone um, on with, you know, that's really fast, it has nice wheels on it. Uh, but that's, you know, and you can control things with your with your with your phone, you can, uh, you know, play music outside of the car, which is not really all that useful, in my opinion, but it's just kind of the kind of funny stuff. You know, all of that comes in coming together, just makes it overall a very unique car. And I cannot, um, and of course, like I mentioned, the acceleration is just utterly bonkers on this car. It's faster than almost every other car on the road you'll find here, um, even though it would, does, definitely does not look like it would be. Um, so that's always a lot of fun showing off the acceleration. Um, and that's, so yeah, sorry, I don't have a, a perfect answer. Like there's not one thing that like really impresses me. I guess, I guess probably if I had to say one thing it would be the acceleration, but, um, and the fact that it's an electric car with that type of acceleration. Um, but you know, to everything comes together really nicely in this car, which is why I don't like to do significant mods. Um, I think that the, this, you know, the design team you know, Tesla knows what they're doing really, really well. Um, and they've built a really beautiful, good looking car. I fully agree. If that's one thing, especially for the model Y performance, the acceleration, as I saw earlier in the video, this car is as fast as, if not faster than many of the supercars you saw earlier at the beginning. That's definitely true. Yeah, it's pretty I, insane. I always say that, like I bring people there and like they like to see the cool cars because they're so, you know, they're unique and they're really cool looking. But I always, you know, this car is actually like basically faster than every single one of those cars. Um, it could like on a straightaway like drag race, it could beat pretty much all of them, I think. Uh, so it's it's always entertaining to look at it like that because it just does not look like that type of car at all. There's lots of love about a Tesla. It is an EV. It's got a great integrated system, hardware, software, superchargers, the whole experience. What does not spark joy about owning a Tesla, especially in Japan? What does not spark joy? Well, there's there's a number of things. Um, I think one is the charging network, at least for Tesla chargers, is not all that uh, exists. I mean, exists, especially in Tokyo, which is where I live. There's quite a few uh, Tesla superchargers, but if you go outside of Tokyo, they're much more sparse. But there are other charging systems and you have to have the adapters for them. Like there's this one called Cha Demo, which I have an adapter for. Um, it's mainly I just have it just in case I ever have an emergency because those are almost everywhere. Cha Demo are very, very common. Um, and there's some others. Um, but I'd say that's one of the things is that the charging network for Tesla is it's growing. Like they're constantly adding more uh, supercharging net, uh, stations. Like I was just mentioning that they just opened one about five minutes from where I live, uh, which is really nice. Um, so they are expanding and I think they're growing, but it's still way behind compared to what it is in the U S. Um, and then the other one is not really, you know, it's not really Tesla related specifically, but just driving in Tokyo, like parking is a big problem, um, or not necessarily a problem. It's just a big hassle and it costs a lot of money. Uh, basically anytime you go somewhere, you're going to have to, if you're in Tokyo, you're going to want to look up exactly the parking spot and exactly how much it's going to cost. Um, before you even head out. Um, so if you, you know you want to go to the movie theater or something like that, they don't always have their own parking lots and you have to find like the closest parking lot and find out where it is and how much it's going to cost. And, and it's like, you know, it's a big deal. But there's some good sides to it as well. Like a lot of these parking lots will have free EV charging, um, which is really nice. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's not really a Tesla related issue. But I would say it's probably just the charging network. Oh, sorry, there is one other thing that is specific to this car. And that is um, its width. It's a very wide car um, compared to most Japanese cars uh, or most cars that I guess that you can find in Japan. Um, it works. It doesn't it doesn't make it impossible to drive, but it does get tight uh, in some situations where, yeah, I've had there's been one single time where I was driving down some very narrow residential roads where I basically um, and they have um, like telephone poles uh, quite often on the corners. And I just got to this one point where I just like, I could not go, like I was going to hit something. Um, uh, so I had to like back up and like kind of just like back all the way out and just find a different route. Um, but that was kind of my own, my own fault. I went a weird way that I shouldn't have gone uh, essentially when I did that. But so that's kind of the only other thing I'd say is just, it's kind of a big car for Japan, but it's not at all impossible. I mean, I live in Tokyo. I've driven this all over Tokyo. I've never had a, a major issue. Um, and there are wider co cars on the road. Uh, so it's totally, it's totally doable. You just have to be kind of careful. Thanks Q, Matt, for sharing with us both the joys 
and also the pain points of owning a Tesla here in Tokyo. We'll now head to the trunk to talk a little bit more about the charging experience, perceptions of EVs here. So see you behind. The Yomi Wharf is beautiful. You can see the ships, the ferries behind us. And one thing I love about Model Y is just the trunk space. Yeah. Oof. Let's look at this space here for both of us. <laughs> We're pretty big, tall people. Have you been camping on your Model Y? Um, no, I've never been camping yet, but it's funny you ask that because I'm actually going camping next weekend uh, with some friends. We're not going to stay in the car. We're gonna, you know, bring our tents and things like that. Um, I'm not really interested in camping inside the Tesla, although I know you can do that. Um, I like the true camping experience, but with the amount of space it has here, um, it's just so much easier to bring. Usually, we have to rent a car and make sure it's a really large one to get all our to get all of our uh, equipment there. It's because it's a lot. Um, so yeah, we're really excited to bring it for camping, like first time ever. I'm super stoked. Very nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. With camping comes, of course, journeys. Long journeys require public charging infrastructure. If I ask you today, Matt, tomorrow, let's just drive to Kyoto. Right. Would you like, let's go or no, hold your horses? Let me do some research. <laughs> I mean, I would say I would do some research, but it wouldn't take me more than like 30 minutes. Okay. I think that, you know, at most. There are superchargers in between here and there, placed at strategic points to make sure that you can get from one place to another. So I really wouldn't be too worried. The only thing I'd worry about is like how much charge is currently in my car. And if I would need to like hit a supercharger or charge it elsewhere, you know, before we head out to, in order to get to one of those superchargers. But generally I try to stay, stick to all my charging at superchargers. Um, the only exception is if I go to a parking lot that has free charging of a different kind. And that's, that's when I use the uh, adapters, obviously. That's a currency that we all speak. Yeah, yeah. But like you said, I think charging is like, like almost as important as the car itself, like knowing how to charge it. It's, it can be a huge thing to overcome and to like get used to. So it's pretty, it can be pretty challenging. The more chargers there are, the more EV buyers the tracks. Talking about attraction. The Teslas don't seem to have the same demographic. We're talking about it in Japan. <laughs> yeah. Like in California, you see practically everyone, most streets having a Tesla. What's it about the user base here? Yeah, it's kind of interesting. Obviously, I don't have any official data. Everything I'm going to be speaking is just on my own experiences. So uh, don't, you know, don't think this is like the absolute truth. But in my experience and what I've seen, uh, most other Tesla owners are much older. Um, I'm quite, I'm probably way below the average age for a Tesla owner uh, in Japan. I'm 36, uh, but most people I see are at least, you know, 40s, 50s, you know, at least uh, for the most part. And I think it's because the Tesla's one, it's kind of an uncommon car um, and it's a rather new company. Uh, so not a lot of people are super confident in it, perhaps. Um, but then there's also I'm seeing I mean, I'm talking in comparison to the other major car companies. Um, but the other thing is that I think a lot of people my age actually don't they just don't need cars. So like most of my friends, even I don't need this car like I was I've been here for 13 years, uh, almost 14 years. I've never owned a car. This is the first car I've owned. Um, and I own it just because it's something that I thought would allow me to do a lot more uh, in Tokyo and all of Japan. It means I could do a lot more trips. There's a lot of different places I could go to. I don't need, I don't commute. I work from home. Um, and it's the same thing for like a lot of friends who are my age. Uh, they, you know, public, just public transportation system here is really, really good. You really don't need to have a car in Tokyo. Um, and even to go to like Kyoto or, you know, Osaka, wherever you want, you can always, there's always trains that go to those major spaces, but for something like camping, you have to have a car. You cannot go camping without a car, essentially, because there's not only is there a lot of things to carry, but you're going to somewhere that's very remote. True. Um, so there's a lot of stuff like that, that having a car really opens, you know, the, up Japan a, a lot more of what you can do. Um, and it's also just convenience. Sometimes it's just a lot nicer to drive than it is to take a crowded train. Um, so I like that. But anyway, back to what you were asking about. I think, yeah, a lot of people don't find it necessary to have a car that are my age. And also Teslas are generally, you know, higher. They're seen as like a premium car, kind of this new technology thing. Um, and people, so when people buy cars here, when they're my age, they usually buy this kind of a standard uh, car and like used ones. You can't really find a lot of used Teslas in Japan, which is another thing I think that kind of turns people off of it. The two dimensions of here, the first layer is if you're living in Tokyo, you don't really need a car 
outside of Tokyo, probably many people do. Yep. And second, Teslas are considered more expensive here. If someone was starting out in early in a career, they would get those cheap K cars, right? You mentioned yeah, the yeah. yellow plate ones, those compact cars. The government gives you a lower tax rate. So it's a lot more affordable. Buying a car like this is considered fancy. Yes, yes, it definitely is. It definitely is. And like you said, the K cars, I mean, their prices by themselves are cheaper. They have lower, you know, exhaust rates or, you know, their output. Obviously, it's more than a Tesla, which has zero, but uh, they're they're lower. So, they're, yeah, there's they're something that the government pushes, um, I think, to allow people to, you know, try to keep it, uh, the effect on the, you know, on the uh, environment down. When you compare to the US mm -hmm. and Japan, mm -hmm. What are people's perceptions of Teslas or even EVs here? Yeah, I mean, it kind of is connected. In Japan, they're definitely seen as like a premium, like a luxury kind of car. Not a lot of people understand them. Uh, most people maybe have seen one once or twice on the road. They're really not that common. So they're kind of a mysterious car, I would say. Um, and most people, I mean, let alone see them, most people have never ridden one. They've never been inside of one. Um, and they don't really know what their capabilities are. They don't know about like how fast they are, how like technology technologically advanced they are, and all the things that you can do with one. Um, compared to the U.S., where they're super common, you see them everywhere, and like people are so well well aware of what Tesla is as a company and and the kind of cars that they make and things like that. I think people here they just know, oh, it's like it's a fancy electric car from the, from the United States kind of thing, and maybe it can drive itself. <laughs> that is true in the U.S. Many of your Ubers are EVs, Teslas. A lot of Model 3s are Uber drivers, especially in California. Whereas here, most of the general public don't get access to even try an EV firsthand, excluding the trains, yeah, excluding the public trains. Right. It's not like many other countries around the world where you see a lot of BYD, MG EVs, Tesla EVs in all nations. So the awareness is still quite low. Mm. While the country is 90% local cars, foreign cars are less than 10% of the total population. I think the bigger challenge to test out here from speaking owners like yourself, locals and also what they call Gaijin, met somewhere in the middle, it's been here for many, many years. It's just that they don't know enough about Teslas. Is that fair? Yeah, absolutely. I think that's a really good perception. I've shown this car to my friends, like Japanese friends uh, in Japan, and they are always like uh, amazed when I show the car to them. They're really like shocked. Like, like, wow, I didn't realize this was such a, like, I didn't realize the car was like, like this. I didn't know it was so cool. I didn't know it was so technologically advanced. I just had this idea of it being like, you know, a fancy electric car, which it is. Um, but it's like a whole other level. Like the, I was mentioning it earlier, but Teslas are so unique, um, compared to every other car that's made right now, I think. Uh, so it's like, it blows people away when they finally get to experience one. I think they really, they see the reason why people buy them or like, what's the, what the attraction is. And I think the other part of it is the media coverage of Tesla is not always positive, even in Japan. Um, a lot of stories from the U.S. come here and, and you know, there's stories of them in Japan as well, but there's a lot of skepticism, I guess you could say, about cars, especially ones that self-drive, um, which I don't use on this car except for on the highways, I use the autopilot. Um, I don't even think full self-driving could work really well here because of the narrow roads. Um, I've never tried, so I can't really say. Uh, but I think a lot of people, because of that, you know, media perception of it, they're much more hesitant to, like, look into it, if, you, if that makes any sense. Fair. Sometimes Tesla has this perception of over-promise. When people hear the terms autopilot and full self-driving, they're like, you got to be kidding me. It's not real, <laughs> right? And also, because of local laws, not all of the technology is fully present in Japan yet. Yeah. Hopefully soon. Yeah, it's. I think, I think in the U.S., one of the things that's not even related to the driving, but like the security, like to have sentry mode. Yeah. Um, and I think what I've heard, at least in the U.S., on your app, you can monitor the cameras live. You can't do that in Japan. You're not. They don't. That that system is not turned on here. Uh, I think it's because of privacy reasons. Yes. Um, so yeah, you can't even like. You, there's things like there's those larger things like the full self driving, which probably don't work as well here, but. Then there's those smaller, like little tiny, like like software update things that we don't get here as well, which are kind of a, a shame, but you know, it's not a big deal. That is true. Japan has a lot of quirks in many industries. Mm -hmm. Like for smartphones, it's required to make sound when you snap a photo. It cannot be silent yeah. for Japanese bought smartphones. Yeah. So mm -hmm. that's one of the small things here. Yeah, exactly. For those who choose to think different, who want to be rebels, and they are considering getting an EV, switching from an ICE car. What's one advice you have for them, Matt? Uh, 
my advice would be to do it. Like, do it, just go for it. Like, if it doesn't even have to be a Tesla. Uh, it can be any other of the EVs that exist out here, like the Nissan Leaf are also really popular and, and much more affordable, you can say. Uh, but yeah, no, absolutely. Teslas are 100% worth it. I love this car so much. And everyone who I've taken for a drive loves the car. Um, you know, people, they get over their a negative impression that they've had of the car for whatever reason, uh, mostly from the media, I guess you could say. Uh, but yeah, I mean, they're, they're, I would, you know, at most try to do a, a test drive. Go do a test drive. You'll it'll change your mind uh, about these cars because they really are incredibly uh, amazing cars and really fun to drive. You'll find the link down in the video description, Tesla.com/drive to get a test drive. Here in Japan, I believe you could test drive definitely the Model Three, the sedan, or the Model Y. This really spacious SUV. Thank you, Matt, for sharing your stories and your experience here. No, my pleasure. I've learned so much. <laughs> if you found this video useful, please click the like button. Hit subscribe to stay updated for more stories with Tesla owners around the world. Take care. This is really cool. Yeah, no, thank you. Look at all that space down there. Yeah. <laughs>